Good afternoon. I hope you all are doing well. I hope you kids had a great school day today. Um, it is Wednesday and it is day two of our Advent discussions um, to help prepare our hearts and minds as we celebrate the birth of Jesus. And so I'm glad that you're here with us today. Uh, if you will grab your Bibles, we're going to be in the book of Genesis this afternoon. Um, Genesis chapter uh, 22. Flip over, that's the first book in the Bible. We're going to look at Genesis chapter 22. And our verse for that is going to be verse number 18. Are you there? Verse 18 says, And all the nations of the earth will be blessed by your offspring because you have obeyed my command. Now, if we look at this passage, this is where God was tempting, um, was tempting Abraham. He tested Abraham to see if he would be obedient to what he told him to do. And, and he was asking Abraham to take Isaac and up to the mountain and, and sacrifice him. And, and if we look at this verse, we see that um, if, you, if you read back like um, verse 12, when, when God said, Do not lay a hand on the boy or do anything to him, for I now know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your only son from me. So, so God was testing Abraham, and he tells him that because of his obedience to him, all of the nations of the earth will be blessed. And so now I want you to turn back a little bit to, Ab uh, to Abraham, to Genesis chapter 15, and that's verses 1 through 6. So I'm going to give you just a minute to, uh, to get there. Oh, good. Hey, Christine, my sweet friend. Yes, tell the kids to watch later. You tell them I'm proud of them that they're at church activities this afternoon. <laughs> All right, so chapter 15. Um, let's look at verse number 1, verses 1 through 6. After these events, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield. Your reward will be very great. But Abraham said, Lord, God, what can you give me since I am childless and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus? Abraham continued, look, you have given me no offspring, so a slave born in my house will be my heir. Now the word of the Lord came to him, this one will not be your heir. Instead, one who comes from your own body will be your heir. He took him outside and said, look at the sky and count the stars if you're able to count them. And then he said to him, your offspring will be that numerous. Abraham believed the Lord and he credited, credited it to him as righteousness. <clears throat> so let me ask you the first question for today's reading. How many nations did God promise to bless? Well, let's look back at our passage. What does it tell us? All the nations will be blessed. That's right. Now, let's look at question number two. How did Abraham respond to God? Well, I'll give you a hint. If you look at Genesis chapter 15, verse 6, it's going to say, it's going to tell you, Abraham believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. He believed him, he trusted him, and, and he saw it as righteousness. Now, let me also share with you that many years later, Jesus was born to a descendant of Abraham. So if we look at that family line, that, that lineage um, from Abraham, we see that Jesus was born to a descendant of Abraham. And he, Jesus, is a blessing to the whole world. So today I ask you, how is Jesus a blessing to you? How is Jesus a blessing in your life? 
That is what I want you to think about and talk about as a family today for Advent Day number two. Jesus blesses the whole world. How is Jesus a blessing in your life? So kids, talk about it. Parents, talk about it with your kids. How is Jesus a blessing in your life? Because, see, the Bible tells us, God's Word tells us in Genesis chapter 22, and all the nations of the earth will be blessed by your offspring because you have obeyed my command. All the nations will be blessed. So, how is Jesus a blessing to you? As we look upon Christmas season, as we, as we enjoy this celebration of when Jesus was born, how he came to earth as this sweet little baby to grow and live his life on earth, to then teach us how to live and then give his life for us so that we could be forgiven of our sins and have a connection to God. That gives us big hope, doesn't it, as we celebrate Advent. So, um, discuss as a family this evening. Talk about how is Jesus a blessing in your life. And then here's our, our, um, our thought for your memory jar. We talked about yesterday. Each day I'm going to give you a little something to think about that maybe you can start a collection, a jar or a basket to where you can look back maybe in January or maybe even next Christmas uh, to see what your thoughts were and what was on your heart this year. So today's question is, do you know how to say Merry Christmas in another language? Do you know how to say Merry Christmas in Spanish or in French? Or I think about my sweet friend Nicole uh, in German or my sweet friends in Myanmar. How would you say Merry Christmas in Burmese? I encourage you to look it up and put some of those uh, different languages in your jar. Talk about it as a family. See how many you can find and then write it down and put it in your memory jar. Um, Merry Christmas in Spanish is Feliz Navidad. Um, Joie Noel. I'll let you guess what language that is in. Um, and so there are so many different languages to learn how to say Merry Christmas. So there's my challenge for you today. Look it up, see what you can find, and put it in your jar or your basket so that you can look back and remember the things that you talked about this Christmas season as you prepare your heart and your mind to celebrate the birth of sweet baby Jesus, the best gift of all. I love you guys. We'll be right back here at 4 o'clock tomorrow to have day three of our Advent celebration. I love you guys. Bye.